For more than 45 years, Adam Nagorny has been one of the nation's top political journalists covering everyone from Mario Cuomo and Jerry Brown to the Clintons and the Bushes. Since 1996, he has been with the New York Times, where he has spent more than a decade as the L.A. bureau chief. He's also an author. His latest book, The Times, How the Newspaper of Record Survived Scandal, Scorn, and the Transformation of Journalism, pulls back the curtain to give readers a rare behind-the-scenes look at the gray lady. Adam Nagorny joins us now in studio with that book. Congratulations on the, on the book. Uh, it's really spectacular and very well-respected, getting great reviews. You've spent four decades as a journalist, 27 <laughs> years at the New York Times, and you call this basically your life's work. Why was it so important for you to do this story, and why now? Um, so first of all, I always wanted to work at the New York Times, like since I was in college. I read a book by Gay Talese, the original sort of great history of the Times, and I thought, this is the kind of thing I would like to do. And I never really got around to doing it. Like, I thought it'd be too hard to do when I worked there. Then a couple of years ago, I decided I'm going to do this. And I just started working on it and talking to people, and there it is. I think the Times is a really important institution in the American journalism world, in the American political world, and just in society in general. And I think it's a really important, compelling story to be told about the What's paper. What's the most surprising thing you learned about the Times research? I guess there's lots of cool stuff through it because I went through lots of private papers and stuff. But I guess sort of how, despite the kind of craziness of the key people there, the flaws, the insecurities, that they keep putting out this really good paper. They do lots of mistakes, which are detailed here. They screw up some really big things. But again and again, they're on this long sort of glide path to success. So you look at the years from 1977 to right. 2016. I don't remember. What happened in 2016? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. There was that election <laughs> yeah. of Donald Trump, right. which became its own thing. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and during that time, there were a lot of changes. But this... Yeah. was probably the biggest change, yeah. right? The smartphone with so many so. people who got the paper right. and then all of a sudden they're not getting the paper, they're getting this. Um, how did the paper adapt to that? Well, not well? Was there a lot of people that were pushing back? The answer is yes. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a great question. I think when I started this book, I didn't know how it would end. Um, and it ended, I would argue, successfully, journalistically and business-wise. If you go back over the years, I will, you see in the book examples of people who just like ridicule the idea of, of the news going digital, right? Mm. There's a, I came across a memo from a memo or a speech from one of the first executive editors saying, you know, I could see people getting their news out of a black box, but they're always going to want to read it on a newspaper, right? It's just raw. And there was a lot of resistance to some of the older executive editors who grew up, you know, through the old way and just never believed this was going to happen. But there were people who saw the future. And one of them was the publisher over the course of this book, a man named Arthur Sulzberg Jr. Um, he began his career working for a wire service. So he was writing stories that got posted when they were done. He never had that kind of allegiance to a press... Uh, deadline that we that us print people do. Plus, right. this will sound a little weird. He was a Star Trek fan, so he would mm -hmm. say stuff like, "I don't care. We have to beam the information into the craniums. We're to get it there." So he was open to it, and I think that's why the paper eventually moved um, in that direction. More reason to see Star Trek, and you can literally see the future. Absolutely. Almost everything. And I'm a huge Star Trek fan, so <laughs> I, I, I love that. I um, so let, let's talk <laughs> about truth right which is such an interesting concept right. right in the book you get into the plagiarism scandals you had and, and right. challenges in covering the iraq war right um, and of course in the post donald trump era right. how do you talk about truth when you have the leader of a party calling the press the enemy of the people right. saying your coverage is fake news right what is the most important thing you learned about trying to win the trust of the audience when it comes to truth well, I mean, one of the things, as you pointed out, there's been a real decline in the public's trust of the media in general, including the New York Times, over the course of this book. And it's a real problem, and part of it, part of it, to be honest, is part of it is, as you said, Trump and some conservative Republicans have attacked the paper's coverage. But the other part is that the newspaper made mistakes mm -hmm. on some big, high-profile stories that I think hurt its credibility. And I think the most important thing you need to do is figure out a way to make sure that your report is as honest, as correct, is down the middle as possible. I'm saying it like it's easy. It's not easy, as you right. see in the book. It's really, really hard. And people screw it up all the time. And I think in this environment where there's an inclination not to believe authorities, not to believe the press, it's even harder. And there's so much of an incentive to go outrageous one way or the other because those right. are often the stories that get the attention yeah. and that make the most money. You know, when people criticize our coverage, the paper's coverage, a lot of times they say, you're just trying to get clicks, right? Exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think that's I, it was ever the truth. It's rarely the truth. But in the industry in general, no question about it. You put the name Trump in a headline, you're going to get a lot more coverage, a lot more clicks than you're going to get if not. And it's something that I think a paper like The Times, serious newspapers, LA Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal has to figure out. You have to keep doing that kind of really credible journalism. At the same time, th these are businesses, right? right? And now the New York Times in particular relies on paying subscribers like you and me rather than advertisers to pay the bills. And you have to, people have to read the paper. Yeah, well, I'm a paid subscriber to that <laughs> Thank and to you. five other papers. I figured that. Uh, and uh, I'm proud uh, now owner of this book, The Times. Congratulations, thank Adam you. Nagorny. And thank you for so many years of excellent journalism, thank especially you. the California reporting thank you. here. We're proud of that. Honored to be here. Uh, the book is uh, now available for purchase everywhere.